Hello and welcome to a video. A video that is very definitely not one of the lovingly crafted, carefully edited, heavily researched, yada yada yada, documentary type things that I was intending to do most of this year. And I still am intending to mostly do that kind of video, but um, I've got irons in the fire, but they're not happening at the moment. I've got another couple of weeks until the next thing is lined up. So in the meantime, I put a poll on Twitter saying, would anybody be interested, just possibly, in seeing me renovate and refurbish my shower cubicle? Now, incredibly, amongst the, I think it was several hundred respondents, 90% of people said yes, they would be interested. No accounting for taste, really. If you are one of the 10%, who reacted with the vomit emoji, then, well, I suggest you watch the entire video so that you are fully informed when you write your angry comment down below. If you are one of the 90%, well, heck, there's a treat in store, as I'm going to refurbish my shower cubicle. We better start with why it needs to be done. Several months ago, when I was sitting here on the toilet in the bathroom, over a period of several weeks, I would be sitting here and, you know, it's a small room, there's not a lot to look at, so my gaze would fall around and I'd look at various things. And I began to notice, over time, weeks, possibly even months, that the bit of wood at the bottom of the shower was just very, very gently, ever so slightly, going darker. And I thought, eventually the penny dropped, and the thought occurred to me that it's probably getting damp or mould, or condensation, or in other words, something bad was happening behind that bit of wood. Now, of course, I did what any sane, rational human being would do, and ignored it for as long as possible, because I didn't want to look down there and start having to deal with leaks under the shower. The time came, however, where I could ignore it no longer. So, in my usual DIY style, I started demolishing the bathroom. That demolition included taking the wooden panels off the side of the shower, down there where the water pipes go. And I pulled all that lot off and all the trim, and I had to actually attack this bottom bit round the pipe to the radiator with my multi-tool because that wood was very firmly in place, so I had to slightly destroy it to get in there. This is the section of trim at the bottom that I initially noticed. It's loose now, but it was at the bottom of the shower compartment. And as you can see, just over here at the end, this is darker than all of this. And this has actually been off now for several weeks for reasons I will come to explain later. And it doesn't look as bad because it's dried out a bit, but this was much, much darker and this was still light. So the contrast was much more apparent. Um, so obviously I took that out. A surprising number of bits of wood all around this that I also had to chop out and pull apart, some of which fell apart because they were indeed damp. What you're looking at now is the close-up view of the bottom left-hand corner of the shower, and you can probably see that this bit of wood is a bit dark, and this bit's a bit dark, and bear in mind, these have now been open and exposed, as I say, for several weeks, for reasons I will bore you with in a bit, and they are now dry. This is dry, this is dry, this one here. This was very, very soggy. Of all the bits of wood, this, which is not even plywood, it's, um, what's the stuff called? Um, chipboard. This is chipboard, and that was very, very soggy. You can see I easily pulled a bit out just with a screwdriver there, just by gently pushing at it. But it's now dry, and this was soggy as well. You are quite probably thinking, as did I, that the shower tray had a leak in that corner. But I filled the shower tray with water, left it for 48 hours, having marked the level, and the level was the same. Not a drip, not a drop seemed to have come out. So the shower tray, though it is old and has a few little scratches in it, does not appear to actually have any cracks in it. The water is escaping by some other mysterious means. The bottom here was soggy, and this, I think, is crucial. 
in fact I'll explain that now. This is the bottom of a post that doesn't really form any structural um, element, it's a spacer between the edge of the wood here and the edge of the door of the shower here. This is just a spacer through which the door is bolted. You join me in the shower, a privilege normally afforded to a very select few indeed, and this is that corner looked at from inside the shower. Now please excuse all the muck in that corner. That does need cleaning, but it's been behind some sealing tape. Um, so it's all going to get dealt with. But what's behind there is the other side of that bit of wood that rises vertically. And what I discovered is that the end of that wood, with the grain all showing, is open to the shower cubicle. Let's go down a bit. Under there, at the edge of the shower cubicle, just behind where all that tape is that I've been using to try and seal things, is the end of that wood. And it is just open enough that when you take a shower, splashes of water can splash up and hit the wood. And with the grain exposed, it is my conjecture that the water is immediately travelling up the grain through the wood, hence why it's discoloured on the other side, and then reaching across into the chipboard and down into the wood below. And it would obviously be tiny, tiny, tiny amounts, just a few drips per shower. But over the five years I've had the boat, it's enough to make it soggy below. In other words, I think the water is hitting the bottom of this wood inside the tray, coming up. That's the only reason why this bit really could be showing as damp. And then when it gets to the top of the tray here, it can go across to this bit, down, and then soak into the chipboard and the board below. Which also explains why all the dampness was concentrated here rather than if it was the shower tray, if it was coming from under here, it would be damper under there and spreading out. But it wasn't, it was dampest here, spreading out that way. So here's the concentration of water. And without any way for the tray to drip onto this, honestly, I think it's just over many, many months and years, it's gone up here and down. And the reason I think I'm right about this analysis is that having discovered it, I used a rather large amount of that sealing tape, which is designed for bathrooms and edges of where tiles meet baths and showers. And I sealed up all around that area so that no amount of splashing in the shower could send any amount of water up into that corner and onto the wood. And that was, well, at least two months ago. And since then it has totally dried out. Could it simply have dried out because I've taken all the woodwork off so it's getting enough air simply to dry it? Possibly, but I do think if I was continuing to add water to it, it wouldn't have, but it has. So sealing off the access to the bottom of that bit of wood has dried the whole thing out. And so we finally come to why I'm refurbishing the shower cubicle. Because I want to chop the bottom of that bit of wood off and then do some sort of permanent fitting inside the shower cubicle that isn't the ceiling tape that stops the water ever going anywhere near that wood again. I can't take the whole bit of wood out, it's holding the shower door in place, but I should be able to trim about an inch off it with the multi-tool. I'd take more off, but one of the screws holding the door on is at that point, so I'll take off as much as I can and then inside the shower prevent any more water from ever getting up there. But regardless, I have never ever liked these tiles anyway. I don't like tiles. I don't like grout. It gets yucky and horrible. I don't like the colour. I don't like the little flowery ones dotted around here and there. Not flowers, are they? They're um, seashells. But I don't like them. And the tiles are cracked in many places because as the boat expands and contracts, the whole thing moves and the tiles crack. And in that corner, all down that corner, which is the edge of the boat, every summer when the boat gets hot, the, the sealant comes away because the boat moves enough that a gap opens up in the sealant. 
I'm not sure I'm going to be able to cure that with a refit. Um, I've been stuffing loads of sealant in every year and it just keeps reopening. But I want those tiles out and I want them to stop cracking. And while we're at it, our long-held desire is to, instead of having a, a tap with two things on it for hot and cold, I want one of those ones with a thermostat so I can just set it and go. So let's do the whole thing. Let me show you what I've bought to reline the cubicle with. What I've settled on is some of these plastic shower boards and you can get them in 10 millimeter width, one meter wide. And those for some reason cost at least 50 quid a board, 60, 70, the, the prices really go through the roof. And you can get them plain or with little patterns on them. But if you buy the five millimeter thick ones that are only 250 millimeters wide, they're only six quid a board. So for the sake of making up the space I need, uh, buying these five mil thick ones not only is substantially cheaper, but also it's going to be easier to put these five mil ones over the tiles because apparently that's what you can do with them. You can either rip all the tiles off if you want, but you can just stick these with the adhesive directly to the tiles. And that is going to help, I think, because if I put them onto the tiles, when they reach the bottom where they join the lip of the shower tray, because my shower tray is unusual in actually having a lip round the edge, this will go over that lip into the tray. So any water going down has to be contained within the tray. Whereas if I put them on the wall where the tiles are, in theory, a bit of water reaching the bottom could trickle through the gap if the sealant wasn't right and down the wood again. So I want these going into the tray and having the five mil thick ones is going to be easier. They're, they're very simple sort of corrugated type construction. I don't know if that's even visible. Let me do do some of that. There we go. It's probably not going to focus. There we go. Just a corrugated plastic. And it's fairly cheap and cheer cheerful in some ways, but uh, at I think they were about six pounds for one of these, which is 2.6 meters long, 250 mil wide, and they are waterproof. You clip them together a bit like flooring, and they are said to be 100% waterproof. Well, we shall find out. I'll put a load of gunge between them as well. But the idea is you just glue them on the back, stick them on the tiles, slot them together, and jobs are good. The only tricky bit, well, there's two tricky bits. Actually, let's go back to the shower cubicle. I'll show you the tricky bit. Tricky bit number one is going to be cutting the ends of those panels so that they fit the shape of the roof. It's a very gentle curve, but it will need some scribing to fit. And then tricky bit number two is over here because this is the edge of the boat. It leans in from around about there. So there is a, a point, where is it? It's that point there, that line. It's vertical up to there and then it's leaning in. So I'm going to have to cut the panels in half and have a join, which is a little bit annoying. They do have some bend in them, but not enough bend, I think for the glue to hold them. So I'll have to put a cut and then a load of sealant along the edge. Uh, but that's also gonna make it quite tricky with the corner piece that would go in that corner to join them together. That will also have to have a cut in it. So there's gonna be a little bit of fiddling about and a little bit of aggravation and probably a little bit of swearing. Did you just hear that noise the shower cubicle made? That's because it's sunny outside and all the wood and the metal is moving and, and cracking. Honestly, narrowboats are a nightmare. Right, time to do some measuring. To the bottom of the shower tray where the lip is. Up to the top. Uh, that'll be bit number one. And it needs to be 179, 179.4 plus the length of the tape measure, which is 68. I can't do that in my head. I shall get a calculator. I've now measured up three of the boards for this side here, which is relatively straightforward because it's straight up, straight down on a level at 
top and bottom. I will have to cut one of them in half um, vertically because this isn't the exact uh, width of three boards, but effectively they're cut for length. Now we get to the more interesting bit, which is the ones going across the back here, because as you can see, you've got the curve of the boat roof. So I've cut a board, not quite to the right length, a little bit over long, so that if I mess this up, I can have another go. Because of course, if I'd made it to exactly the right length and then I cut the curve in it and, and make a mess of it, uh, that whole board would be ruined. So it's about 10 centimeters too long at the moment to give me a couple of tries. And when I've got that curve right, I will then just cut the bottom off, which is a straight edge and should be straightforward. Now for the purposes of doing this, I've, I've come up with this high-tech scribing tool, AKA a piece of wood with a point and some holes in it into which I can stick a pen and then trace the shape here. And for this, I'm gonna to have to get myself in a slightly contorted position because I need to hold this board in place while I'm doing this. It's only a biro, it does seem to mark the, the board okay. So I'm hoping this will work. Right. That has made a mark, which is hopefully going to be okay to cut from. I guess I'll find out when I cut it. It is a couple of minutes later and honestly I'm not best pleased with myself because I veered off by a millimetre or two while I was cutting rather annoyingly. So as you can see although it sort of follows the shape it's tight in the corner and then there's a millimetre or two gap here. However I am going to be squeezing sealant gunge all along here so that will hide that gap. So I think I'm going to take that as acceptable but not great but it'll be hidden. Not brilliant. Must do better. C minus. Something amazing has just happened. Here I am cutting the middle plank which I'm cutting to the right place by using this off cut on the right to measure out the width of the one that will go there. So then I've got the full length plank I'm cutting at the top. I haven't cut it at the top yet, that's not what's miraculous. But look, two panels worth takes me exactly to that point in the corner where it comes down a bit with the trim. I thought I was going to have to end up doing a cutout for that and it just fits perfectly. Houston, we have a problem. It is the next day and midst the chaos of my laundry drying behind me in the saloon, I'm trying to cut some more of the boards, specifically the one on the floor there. There we go. That's the one that is going to go at the back on the left where the side of the boat starts to slide in. And in order to test fit that, I need to remove the vertical shower rail, the one that the shower just slots into, the shower head. Here is the screw that was at the top of holding that rail on. As you can see, it's virtually a pristine screw. Look at that. Shiny and untouched. That's because being at the top, no drop of water has ever reached it. However, the screw at the bottom of the rail is in less good condition. That, my friends, is the screw at the bottom of the rail, which has clearly seen better days, and is so rusted, there's nothing left to get a screwdriver into to take it out. So I'm going to have to try turning it with pliers, I think. Is that going to come out? Yay! Oh my, look at the state of that. Perhaps I should have been a dentist. Anybody want any teeth pulled? Well, that means now I can cut this one, which hopefully I've marked out correctly, and do a test fitting and get very angry if I've mucked it up. Well, all things considered, I am not going to complain about that. The gap in the top left-hand corner is too big. It's very, very, very snug in a couple of points going down the left-hand side. But really, I don't think I could have hoped for that to go any better. Because 
by the time there's a bit of sealant just in that corner and I don't think I'm going to use one of the corner pieces because the corner pieces don't bend very well so they won't deal with that point where the side suddenly comes in so I'm simply going to use ordinary gungee sealant on this bit and that will have to hide that plus of course you'll have the gap taken up by the width of the new boarding that I'm putting on the left here so in fact that little gap in the top left let me give you a close-up that should disappear with a combination of sealant and the boards on the left hand side and the same with those gaps there bit of sealant you'll never see it so yes pretty pleased with that of course that was just a test fit whether I can actually get the blooming thing out again now is another matter entirely it's looking nicer than the tiles though it's another day and another problem as you can see I have removed the existing taps which are down there notice how long the threaded part is because it has to go through the tiles and then the wood and then have space for something to screw onto the back of it I had not accounted for needing a thread that long and the replacement tap I bought which is this thermostatic thing obviously only has little stubs there which will barely go through the wall and it does come with these size adapters but they are at a funny angle and also won't go through the wall long enough I think what I'm going to do is just reline the shower and put the original taps back in and as and when I get a new um, tap I'll have to do that as a separate bit of the project so what I need to do now is scrape out all the old sealant and probably I guess give the tile some sort of sanding to try and make them a bit more adhesive for the glue that's going to go on them you know this is what real narrow boating is all about. Forget going along the canals, the wind in your hair, the ducks and the geese and the swans and all the wildlife around you. No, real narrow boating is about sitting in the bottom of a shower cubicle on a very hot day, scratching away at mouldy old grout and sealant with a razor blade. Oh, you can't beat it. Well, that took about two and a half or three hours it was remarkably fiddly work going around with a razor blade removing all the old um, sealant and all I've got to show for my efforts is this little collection a miserly collection of of bits which will go in the bin but at least now the shower cubicle is in its ready state ready for everything to actually go in so I'll do a final test fit make sure it's all cut to the right size and then go ahead with gluing although I might just stop for an ice cream first I feel a lot better for that and I'm going to have a cup of tea but before I have the tea I'm going to degrease all the surfaces to make sure the glue sticks and for that I'm going to use this WD-40 specialist degreaser and just for note before you start writing in the comments no this isn't the normal WD-40 not the stuff you spray to drive out water this is a product made by the WD-40 company that is a degreaser and I had good uh, success with this when building my camper van the only teensy snag is that you're not supposed to breathe the fumes at all as it's highly poisonous and they say use outside which is a bit tricky when you're doing a shower so I've opened the window there I've got a window open there I shall hold my breath and do it as quickly as possible and rush out to take gulps of air from the uh, from the window between spraying it on and that will have to do and then while it all evaporates and clears the grease off I'll go and have my cup of tea I'm going to switch the camera off while I do this I don't want this spraying on the lens it's another day and I'm getting a bit annoyed now I'm all set to put this corner piece the first corner piece actually this is a test corner piece but I'm set to put a corner piece into the corner of the shower and I realize that because of the wobbliness of the walls with the tiles it's not completely straight this won't just sit it needs to be held firm against the shower while it dries let me show you there's the corner piece and if I just put glue on it and push it there it's not going to be held tight in the corner 
and because this is not absolutely vertical I kind of need to push against it at various points to hold it in place. Now I've spoken to the company that make these things and they say ah what we all normally do as well as the glue is screw them into place but I can't see how that's going to work either. Now if you're putting the panel in that way round because of the way they're designed to slot into each other they're like floor tiles there is just about a gap behind the panel on that side where the screw head could sit. So you're fine at that end but then when you get to the other end of the panel and you want to put another corner piece in it'll go against the opposite bit where it, it's just flat and it's the screw head is going to get in the way of that part of the panel because that is flat against where the screw head is. So you're going to end up with this bulge which will push the whole thing slightly away from the wall because that is a flat edge that you're trying to push against that screw head that's pushing into the gap in it. And yes, I know it looks like there's a bit of gap there just because just I'm holding it rather than it actually being glued into place. But if you actually put it in properly with that flush against that, that's now pushing into the screw and you have this bulge. So it'll work on one end, but not the other. This is perplexing. Right, given what I've just learned, I could put some screws in that corner piece on this end and put the first board in like that with the edge going into the corner piece that leaves the space for the screw. But they also suggest you screw the boards in as you glue them. But again, you'll have this edge here. And if you screw through that, which as you can see is flat against the tiles, the screw head is going to get in the way of the next tile coming into place here. And there isn't enough thickness on this to kind of bury the screw head in it. It needs to be out the top of this in order to have something to push the thing against the wall. Um, I'm genuinely baffled. If the screw head is too thin it won't hold the tile and there's there's no thickness to squish it into that to give the next board the room to slot into place. Just to heap misery upon issue these boards at the back which I have cut and contoured of course to the roof have the side going into that corner piece that isn't the side that has the space for the screw which is this side. I think I might have a little scream now. I'm just going to turn the camera off, have a quiet little scream. Right, I've come up with a cunning plan. Because that board on the left is fractionally too long, it's an incredibly snug fit. So snug that it's holding the other one tight. So if I glue those into place just as they are, and because they're so snug, they will then hold the corner piece in place. Which means I'll then have less of a problem holding these ones in place. That's the theory. So I need to do those two back ones and the corner piece first. All right, here we go. I am armed and dangerous. This could all go very horribly wrong. I have to confess, I'm not looking forward to this. Right, let's get some gunge. I've got my super gunge dispenser, the one I bought for doing the camper van. Which is the best. Honestly, if you haven't got a good gunge dispenser, the difference between that and the cheap ones. I'm talking about this thing. The cheap ones are rubbish. You're having a prop one. Ooh, look at all that gunge coming out. See? Look how it dispenses the gunge. Oh. Oh my god, this is going to get messy. Ah! It's getting messy! <laughs> now, let's lift that up and press into place. Now, I need to quickly get... Actually, that's holding itself in place fairly well. 
That's holding better than I thought it would, just on the power of the liquid gunge alone. That's good. I wonder if I need to wipe up some of that excess. I think I do. Uh, so we'll have two things. We'll have a, an excess gunge catcher on the floor from when this keeps squirting out gunge even though I told it to stop. But also, I might just wipe up a little bit of the excess here because I'm not going to do this side until later. So that can go there. Right, let's get these panels in the right order because it would be somewhat annoying if I put these in the wrong order. Do we think that's enough? Hard to know, isn't it? I think I think I'll only discover if I've put enough on as the process continues. At least I've put the gunge on the correct side. That always helps. Wipe off a bit of excess with my finger. Can't beat a good finger. That sounded worse than I meant it to. Right, panel number one. I just remembered I was going to sand these panels to give them some adhesion, which I've entirely forgotten to do. <sighs> Panel number two. I'm probably going to need another yeah, carton of this soon. You know, I could put this on a wall on the tape modern and it would fetch millions. Perhaps I should sell this as a non-fungible token. They're all the rage these days, I hear. Get me some of that NFT action. Okay, that's, I mean, that's quite a lot of glue, really. If that's not enough to hold a tile in place, there's something very wrong with the world. Now, this is the one that is actually a little bit too long. So it's gonna be a bugger to slot into place. It doesn't like it. I tell you what, I'm never going to get these off again. This stuff is stickier than I imagined. The other thing I didn't manage to do while cutting them was exactly match up the marble patterning. I don't know if you're supposed to be able to do that. It must be a repeated pattern, but anyway, I haven't managed to match it up. So you can see the join in the tiles, in the panels. Right, I think that one's in. Oh, I, I need a rest. Oh, it's so hot. I am wearing slippers, mind you. That probably doesn't help. Okay, well that corner piece is staying where it was supposed to. The friction of that one is holding that in. I'm ridiculously hot. I mean in a temperature way, obviously. This last one I think is going to be an absolute swine to slot into place. And if I don't do it quickly, Right, oh, I'm gonna need the other glue thing, aren't I? I had to do these end pieces in a really weird way. I'll explain why. Well, you'll see why. It's all getting a bit steamy. Caressing the panels in the bathroom. Nurse, the screens. Ooh. Right, okay, now. Quickly, 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 before that one sets so much that I can't get the other tile underneath it. Oh. oh, have I run out of glue? Oh, balls. Yeah, that one's empty. That's just what I didn't need. Right, back in a second. New thing of glue. There 
This is going to be very awkward. I feel it in my bones. Right, you go under there, under there. too much off this panel but I really hope that isn't going to be an issue oh what am I an utter pillock I didn't put any glue under there I wonder if I can squish some in oh, from the side right here we go <laughs> Okay, all right, well that's probably the best I can hope for. That's not brilliant, but I may have to gun some sealant in there. I wonder why that isn't quite... It's weird, there's a little gap between the corner trim piece and the panel, and yet they are the same dimensions to slot into each other. There shouldn't be a gap. That shouldn't be feasible. Somehow there is. Very strange. Do you know, I think, again, it's one of those things where I think it's as good as it's going to get, all things considered. Now, if I just hadn't dropped quite so much glue in the shower compartment. I tell you what, this stuff is sticky. Really, really sticky. Which I know is what you want. That's obviously good. But I don't think I'm quite prepared for how much mess. I don't know why. I mean, it's DIY. Of course, it's going to be a mess. Slight change of plan. I just realised that if I put these side ones in, the first two of them, uh, flip the other way, so the bit you slot into is more accessible, I can put them in and then measure that, that one up perfectly with everything in situ and still be able to slot it into place later. So I am going to glue these two now. Right, I've got the panel to size and done a test fit, which was a little bit awkward. Not so much the getting it in, although that was awkward, but getting it back out again because it was a very precise fit. But I've got it, I'm just going to glue it, and that will be this side and that side done, apart from final um, sealant around the edge. So, glue, glue. It occurs to me that using one of these glue guns is a bit like playing the bagpipes. Not that I ever have played the bagpipes, but you have to squeeze, don't you? And then after you finish squeezing the bag, the pipes keep playing for a bit while you take another breath and then you squeeze again or, or do you squeeze while you're taking a breath I forget anyway the point is there's a certain amount of hysteresis in the system which there is also with a glue gun in that it keeps squeezing the glue out even after you've stopped applying the pressure so I do wonder perhaps should I take up the bagpipes although given the amount of mess I've managed to make with the glue gun it may not follow that I'll be any good with the bagpipes just because I've been using this. Now, this is where it got a little bit awkward. Yeah, I put glue everywhere in the test fitting, but it did work in the end, but I had to shout at it a bit. Wow, there we are. Two sides done, apart from a bit of sealant around the edges. Okay, right now, lunch, lunch time. I am now at the stage of a test fit of the first couple of panels. Those are just holding themselves in place through gravity. As you can see, I've taken the taps off. It's another masterpiece. I shall go and drill that hole.
There's the hole. Good, not pretty, but good. Right, let's get these glued in. Ugh. A certain amount of time has elapsed during which I've been getting quite irate, making just minute little adjustments, a few millimetres here, shaving another millimetre off there, trying to get these bits to fit and not get in the way of any of the rest of the door frame and whatever. But the good news is all the panels are now fitted. It is not really my greatest DIY achievement, but it's not horrific. So I'll take that. Obviously I need to put the taps back on. I also need to run sealant around all the edges and all the bits where I've missed any. But gone are the tiles. It is late past eight o'clock in the evening. I am tired, I'm creaking, I am aching. I'm not in a particularly good mood. And I, I just don't think I've done as good a job as I want to do, but I have finished sealing around all the bits that need sealing. I'm getting a headache from the sealant fumes, despite again, having the windows open. There's not a lot of ventilation in that um, bathroom. I've had it uh, uh, up to here for today. I just need to reattach the taps because if I don't put those back, I can't switch the water pump on for the rest of the boat. So I'll just do those and uh, then it should just dry over the next 48 hours and in theory be ready for use after that. Oh, and I need to put the hanger thing back up that you put the shower head into, um, but that's easy. I've got um, drill bits for going through tile and stuff like that, so that uh, I say it's easy. <laughs> DIY is never easy, but hopefully that will be straightforward. Anyway, that's it for today. It is a couple of days later, the sealant should have set by now, so all I need to do is the finishing touches of putting the, uh, I don't know what you call it, the shower head hanger thing, the vertical pole that the shower head sits in when you're showering. That needs to go back on the wall, to which end I have bought some screws that are five millimetres longer than the original ones, because the panels are five millimetres thick, so we've added five millimetres of depth, and also a set of tile cutting drill bits, because I will need to go through the tiles. And then with that back on, and a new little, um, what do you call it, an accessory, a basket, basket's probably the word, a little basket that I didn't have in there before, but I'm going to screw that to the wall as well for putting your shower potions and lotions in while you're showering. And then that will pretty much be done. Just make a hole through the panel to start with. Right, now we're through to the tile, so I'll need a tile drill. Right, if I could only work out how to get the drills out of their plastic packaging, I'd be on a winner here. Oh, there we go. I might just revert to a wood drill for the wood on the other side. Right, in theory, that has done plastic panel, tile, and the wood behind. And in real theory, without going through to the... Um, other side, which is the dinette. In fact, I might just check that I haven't gone all the way through. Hang on. Well, I can't see a hole. So I'm going to assume that's all right. The screw heads are fractionally, the, the actual head is fractionally smaller than the old one, so it's not quite grasping the thing. What do you call this thing? Top of the shower attachment thing, as well as it should. However, I don't think it's going to fall off. No, don't think so. After due consideration, I'm not happy with those screws. I'm going to go back to the DIY store. I'm back, and needless to say, it's all going very badly indeed. I um, not only bought new screws, I decided that as that old shower hanger thing was a bit rusty and horrid, I'd buy a new one, which said, can use existing screw holes. Good, I thought, because I've just made two screw holes. Uh, except it's not true, of course. Of course, <laughs> they never tell you the truth with DIY products, because it probably is fine if you have a shower that's normal household shower, but doing it in a boat, you can't actually put this up high enough for the bottom one, which is fixed, to go into the screw hole I've just made. So while the top screw hole can be reused, the bottom one can't. So I'm now going to have to fill that with filler and hope nobody notices that there was a screw hole there. And make another screw hole for the bottom of this one. Which also, incidentally, this whole thing uses different screws as well. So just to uh, 
compound everything. I'm getting a bit fed up actually. I am fed up with the project and honestly fed up with my own incompetence. I just little, so many little things. Just, yeah, just fed up. Right, let's try and work out. It's not as if you can even stick a pen through that to make a mark where the hole needs to go. It's, it's, it's a long thing with a long hole and I won't be able to get a pen down there. So, uh, just fed up. <laughs> I just have a fear that I'm going to end up screwing so many holes into this that I then need to put a whole new plastic panel and just redo it all again, all again, because of making so many holes. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to end up with no plastic panel left because I've just made so many holes in it. If I do miss this up, I'll come out in the mirrors hanging on the inside of the dinette. And putting a drill through a mirror will mean, well, it'll be bad. Seven years bad, if you believe in that kind of thing. Ta-da! Before I test whether that's on properly, I'll get out the shower. And there we go. Water from the shower head. It's not leaking at the joint, joint with the uh, pipe. Now the other thing I was going to put up was this basket thing for shower essentials which appears to just have two screw holes, more holes in the new plastic, and then just goes in the corner. So I'll make some marks and put that up. Okay from top, sealant, shower panels, new shower hangy thing, new shower head, new toiletries shelf, old taps but there we go all the way down to sealant at the bottom and the existing shower tray in terms of the problem that started this whole thing off which you may recall way way back in the decades since this project started was uh, water going up a piece of wood on the frame of the door i was going to chop away at it with the uh, multi tool multi, multi tool but i haven't done that i'll show you what i've done Firstly, you can see that I put one of the shower panels down this little strip. And now, where the tiles stopped about an inch above the shower tray so the water could splash up, I've taken the bottom of that panel all the way down and put sealant underneath it between the shower tray and the bottom of the panel, but also stuffed the sealant nozzle underneath there and squidged so much sealant behind that panel and underneath where that piece of wood is that it's pretty much all sealant behind there and I would venture to suggest there's no chance on earth that any water is going to be able to get up from the shower tray let me see oh, there, yeah you can see it look sealant galore no water is going to get up there now and with that I'm calling this project done and I'm going to have a stiff gin and tonic. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.